In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern where things, again, overall just look warmer for the entire kind of central and eastern United States. Once we move into the early April time frame for a lot of areas closer to the Gulf and really areas in like the center and in the mid-Atlantic areas, it is going to be warmer much sooner than that even. Uh, there is still colder pockets for the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, the Mid-Atlantic, the Northeast, and both major models still show snowfall for all of these regions. So it's really weird that we're in an overall warmer pattern, and that is still what we're expecting, but it is still what we're expecting. We're also seeing big signs of severe weather. We've been watching this on the models for a few days, and as of yesterday, we've had some long-range outlooks from the Storm Prediction Center for a potential severe weather outbreak. We're going to be touching on that today among other potential severe weather events. So let's just dive into things like looking at the six to 10 day temperature outlook here from the National Weather Service. And this goes from March 31st to April 4th. Today is the last day we will be seeing a March day in this outlook, which is interesting. We see a little bit of below normal temperatures here for the Northwest. And this also extends into the Southern areas of Alaska. We call this a negative PNA, and this is a pretty marginal one to say the least. That encourages warmer temperatures for these areas in the center of the United States and into the eastern United States. And because it's so marginal, so weak in other words, we can see that for these northern areas, the warmth doesn't quite reach up there for this time frame. Let's go ahead and take a look at the precipitation outlook for the same exact time frame. And as we just take a look at it, we can see that the west is going to be bombarded by multiple major storms as this is a very active storm track here in the upcoming pattern. Not only that, a lot of these are going to kind of redevelop over the plains east of the Rockies and travel into the eastern states where we will also likely be looking at above normal precipitation for a lot of these areas as well. To find drier conditions outside of Alaska and Hawaii, of course, you have to move to Texas, southern Texas, more in particular into southern New Mexico. Uh, so a really active looking pattern throughout much of the United States. Looking at the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook, this goes from April 2nd through April 8th. Again, early April, the first week of April, we are seeing this warmth spread further north to where now the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, northeast for the most part, unless you're in very far Minnesota, uh, very far northern uh, upper peninsula of Michigan or very far northern Maine. Uh, where things could be near normal to even below normal for those very far northern areas. But really, the central and east looks very warm for this outlook off overall, and it's pretty obvious. The northwest still colder, and Alaska much colder. So we can tell that this negative PNA is really expanding and actually becoming more intense, not really over the United States, but for likely western Canada and into areas of Alaska. And that's enough to kind of surge this warmth even further to the north here for a lot of these Again, central and eastern states. Let's go ahead and look at the precipitation during this time frame now. And as we just take a look at it, we see that the western area is still expected to be pretty far above average as far as precipitation and also this eastern area. The below normal precipitation kind of shifts a little bit eastward towards this kind of like southeast and Gulf Coast area. Whereas these areas that were below normal for the 6 to 10 day outlook are much closer to normal here throughout the southern plains. Taking a look at how things have looked over the past 20 days, which will be the 5th through the 25th of March, we can see below normal temperatures have prevailed along that western seaboard, just like what we're seeing in the upcoming pattern. And above normal temperatures, because of that, have surged in the central and eastern states, again, much like what we're seeing in the upcoming pattern as well. So very, very much so what we saw in earlier March into middle of March is what we're expecting here for the very end of March into early April. Uh, a continued very early spring, a very early start to the spring weather uh, looks to just glide right into April for the most part with a few hiccups with colder air and you, against chances of snowfall, but uh, really, really warmer than normal when we look at the big picture here. Now we're going to go ahead and move on and see what the European model has to say for the entire upcoming two weeks. <clears throat> and as we just take a look at this, Looking at, I'll take it to this evening, uh, today on Tuesday the 25th. And what we see is that there is a couple of showers around for areas in the Midwest, Ohio Valley, and into the kind of like southern mid-Atlantic. We overall have an opposite pattern to what we're seeing upcoming, but 
We have a positive PNA here tonight, and this causes the cold to move into the central and eastern states. And we could tell by that dipping of the jet stream that we're under a trough for the most part. And really for areas further south, like down here, uh, at least for my neck of the woods in southeastern Virginia, it hasn't been the worst day ever. It's actually been quite warm and quite sunny. I've been out there a lot today. So uh, despite this trough, we're so late in the season now, we're starting to move into like close to the mid-spring kind of point, which will be about April 15th. Uh, so the, even these cooler days are a little bit more tolerable, which is kind of a cool sign of the times here that we're in. Looking at Wednesday afternoon, again, much quieter. There is some snow showers throughout the Northeast, some rainfall happening in other states, but nothing too major. So we're just going to kind of glance at this and move past it towards Thursday on the 27th. <clears throat> and this is when we get our first kind of major low pressure system moving on shore to the Northwest, where we see snowfall for the mountains, rainfall in the more lower areas, kind of obvious there. Some thunderstorm activity present throughout the Midwest and Southern Plains, but again, nothing too major outside of that Northwestern corridor of the United States. By Friday afternoon, this will be the 28th of March. We see that this storm has basically moved onshore and we see snowfall throughout a lot of the mountains in the West. Rainfall for many different states there. We continue to see thunderstorm activity here in the deep South, like Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana here. And then we have a couple of areas of low pressure throughout the central plains into the upper Midwest. And this is causing some snowfall there near the Canadian border and mostly north of it, actually. Some ice, perhaps, for the upper peninsula of Michigan and parts of Wisconsin and Minnesota. Nothing too crazy, though. As we move towards Saturday, though, this is when your severe weather outbreak is potentially going to be starting here, Saturday the 29th. We see a 997 millibar low pressure center there between Kansas and Oklahoma strong thunderstorms developing in this warm sector. And what I mean by that is we have a warm front up here to the north and it's a high precipitation one, which makes it really, really easy to see. This creates a warm sector to the south of it where we're really warm, really humid. That is the overall trend here. We do have an extending cold front south of that low. And that is what is really sparking up the severe weather concerns along the Gulf Coast, but mainly actually a little bit to the north of the Gulf Coast, areas like Arkansas, Tennessee, northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, Kentucky, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, will, will be some primary areas to watch here on Saturday. And as we head towards the evening, we can see a lot of that spreading into Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, Pennsylvania. This low really taking off. 998 there near northern Illinois. Some snowfall for the upper Midwest from that. We do have a weaker secondary low kind of dragging behind. That one bringing some snowfall to the Rockies as well simultaneously. As we move more towards like the afternoon and evening of Monday. Uh, or Sunday better yet. On uh, that same day. Um, so we're going to be seeing some severe weather continuing on for Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio. This is kind of the primary day that we're watching Sunday where we do have a long range outlook against showery and thunderstorm activity to the Southeast as well. But your primary pocket is right in here with that dragging cold front behind this low. See the warm front out ahead of it. Like we mentioned, Monday is going to be interesting because we see this cold front start to impact the kind of southeast and mid-Atlantic coast area where we have another extended day outlook for these areas here where we're watching for severe weather also Monday night heading in towards Tuesday, April 1st. Simultaneously at the same exact time, we have another area of storminess moving onshore to the northwest, bringing snowfall to those mountains once again, rainfall in the lower elevation areas. We're just kind of like a revolving door here, starting all over with another system moving in kind of the same way. And by Tuesday evening on the 1st, we see a 986 millibar low pressure center kind of breaks out there over eastern Colorado. And we see a tandem team of multiple lows around. This is bringing a whole lot of storminess to those mountain ranges there. A ton of snowfall. But by Wednesday afternoon, we see another explosion of storms across your main severe weather areas. 991 here now over northern Missouri. We'll probably be watching a lot of areas in here for Wednesday the 2nd, if I had to guess. Again, we do have a warm front out ahead of things, so we get that same warm sector effect where we have high humidity, high temperatures, and overall high, uh, highly favorable conditions for severe weather and thunderstorms underneath. 
Moving this towards Tuesday on the 3rd, it just kind of continues. I mean, we have tons of storminess popping up throughout the Plains, Midwest, Deep South, Ohio Valley. It's going to be a messy start to April, perhaps. Friday on the 4th, we get this weaker low after everything's said and done. That's kind of between the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast there. A dragging cold front behind everything is going to bring a continued threat of thunderstorms and maybe even severe weather here to these parts. And by Saturday afternoon... Uh, right here, we see these thunderstorms throughout the southeast and parts of the southern mid-Atlantic. And meanwhile, we have another low, 994 over Colorado, bringing some snowfall to those mountains. And maybe even uh, some severe weather popping up throughout the plains just to the east of it. Looking at Sunday afternoon, we definitely are seeing a threat of severe weather here. 995 eastern Colorado, heavy snowstorm for Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, probably even down to New Mexico. And then you get this really elongated cold front look out ahead of things, probably a drier warm front out ahead. And this is a violent look. I mean, this would be bad, bad thunderstorms in here, probably some pretty major severe weather. For Sunday the 6th, it is in the long range, so take it with a grain of salt. But the trend here is just continued major storms bringing potential major severe weather. Uh, Monday afternoon, that kind of extends out to the east, so we get continued thunderstorm and severe weather concerns once again. And then this moves straight towards the east as we approach like Wednesday the 9th, Tuesday the 8th, Wednesday the 9th time frame. That'll have moved out and pretty much we get a major low here off the mid-Atlantic and get an interior snowstorm on this model between the 8th and 9th of April. Obviously, this is incredibly far out <clears throat> and climate wise, the further we're moving away from winter, the less and less likely this type of stuff is. But you can't ignore it. I mean, this is a crazy, crazy look. Looking at the Cape, we talked about this yesterday, actually, but we see kind of typical Cape for this time of year. And then right as we're approaching the weekend, it just explodes northward where we're seeing uh, convective available potential energy is what this Cape stands for. And really, that's just an equation between humidity and temperatures. And it tries to give us uh, really the potential for thunderstorm development. And again, we start at the beginning and there's like really limited amounts near the Gulf. And we really just see this explode starting again, Saturday, the 29th into Sunday, the 30th Monday on the 31st as well up into the mid Atlantic. We have uh, numbers ranging between a thousand and 2000. So that's really, really decent amounts. Uh, and just the days following, we get explosive amounts of Cape still moving in the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. I mean, it's like we hit April 1st and a light switch gets flipped and uh, we start to just see this huge area of potential thunderstorms over a lot of the central and eastern states. So it's going to be game on perhaps here very, very soon for daily thunderstorms in many different areas. The GFS model, uh, we're going to get some good agreement here with a lot of our severe weather events. Here's the first one kind of moving in, moving out. Uh, we get that next one as well with some snowfall in the northeast and parts of the mid-Atlantic as well there around the second, third time frame. But severe weather for the south. Uh, more snowfall perhaps as we get a low right at the end of the model run off the east coast. Some snow showers in here in cold conditions. Again, you're going to want to take this with a grain of salt at the end of a model run like this. But it looks similar timing to the European model and showing snowfall for some of these areas. It's hard to deny that there is a chance, especially if we end up with something like this. Uh, that's going to definitely bode well in the way of snowfall where we have the warmer temperatures in the west, colder in the east. Uh, that would be an interesting flip to see around that time frame. Total precipitation is crazy. Uh, we still have very high amounts for the west, especially the northwest coast and areas of like northern California. But this is a little bit decreased from what we have been seeing. Uh, but for a lot of areas in the central and eastern states, it's going to be above average here. So let's look at the anomalies. And yeah, I mean... Uh, there's a couple areas that are below average, I would say east of the Rockies, but it's much more above average there. And then again, it's a little hit or miss now for the Northwest, where a lot of these areas average such high precipitation that even the large amount that they're going to be seeing isn't even average for them. Looking at the total snowfall in the European model, <clears throat> feet and feet and feet out west, no surprise there. The upper Midwest into parts of the Great Lakes do see plowable snowfall. And also the interior areas of some of the Ohio Valley into the northern mid-Atlantic and northern northeast all see plowable amounts of snowfall as well. The GFS model is going to agree. Uh, the west is a little bit more underwhelming. It always kind of looks like this over the last few days for some reason. Uh, we get some like lower Midwest snowfall even into parts of the central plains 
I'd be very surprised by that. More of the Ohio Valley getting impacted. A little bit more of the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast getting impacted as well here, but both models showing snowfall for all of these regions. It's pretty crazy stuff. We'll see if it actually comes true. Storm Prediction Center outlooks. We'll start with day one today on Tuesday the 25th. These do wrap up around 6 a.m. Eastern time every morning. So they go from 6 a.m. to 6 a.m., not 12 to 12. Uh, so keep that in mind. So this will be overnight as well. We have three areas that are lighter green there. That's what we call our general thunderstorm risk. We do expect general thunderstorms, but no severe weather is really expected, although it does happen in these lighter green areas sometimes. So please heed every watch warning and advisory. We do have areas throughout parts of Texas and Oklahoma, as well as southeastern Florida, uh, where we do have a level one marginal risk for severe weather. So isolated severe weather happening in those darker green areas. Uh, for tomorrow on day two, for Wednesday on the 26th, we have four general thunderstorm risk areas, two marginal risk areas, and now we have a yellow area between Oregon and Washington. And I'm super curious about this. Uh, this is a basically level two slight risk means scattered thunderstorm, scattered severe weather reports, sorry, coming in. And we actually have a hatched area between Oregon and Washington for hail, which means very large hail is possible. Pretty unique stuff. Washington and Oregon, uh, perhaps a pretty significant severe weather event up there for tomorrow on Wednesday. Day three here, which will be for Thursday the 27th, we have two general thunderstorm risk areas and two marginal risk areas there, as you can see. As we move into the extended range, we're going to first take a look at day six here. This is what we initially saw as day seven. So for a lot of these deep south states here, a lot of the Midwest, and then a lot of the Ohio Valley and a lot of areas in between, we're going to be seeing a 15% chance of severe weather here, which roughly translates to a slight risk at least. And that would be a very, very large slight risk. It would be easy to assume that we will see at least an enhanced risk in here, maybe even more. Uh, that's probable at this point, but not for sure. Not definite, but definitely probable. Uh, looking towards the next day, this is for Sunday the 30th, by the way. Uh, looking towards the next day, Monday on the 31st, we do see again Alabama, Georgia, a little bit of northeastern Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, up into Virginia. A roughly a slight risk in there. Again, kind of leaving room for an enhanced risk, maybe more. Uh, but this might just be a slight risk. <clears throat> Looking at the conditions <clears throat> and really the locations, Sunday seems like obviously the bigger day. And Saturday, for that matter, which would have been the day before Sunday, obviously. I don't know why I'm talking to you guys like you're in grade school or even preschool there. But uh, that Saturday, I think, has a severe weather risk as well. Uh, it's just not popping up on these outlooks. But I think once it's within those three days for categorical, I think we'll at least have a marginal risk, if not like a slight risk, perhaps for Saturday also, which will be the 29th. So keep that in mind as well. With all that being said, be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload. So you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.